I think probably the single biggest is what Gartner calls the nexus of IT forces. That's the joining together of the forces of mobile and social and cloud and big data. That joining point of those four things creates a new environment for business, for sure, and certainly a new environment for IT leaders. But to, we tried to um, distill into a few words the challenge for leaders of businesses which use technology and for the leaders of technology. And we believe those three words represent something quite important, that leaders need to focus on what is most important. And what is most important is not primarily the technology itself, it's what you do with it. It's how you can use technology to create business value, how you can use technology to create social cohesion, utility and value for citizens in their services from government. Focus then on what's most important. Connect. Connect with clients, with customers, with citizens. Connect with the vast vast quantities of data that are becoming available and lead very much in this sense that leaders take people and take organizations in new directions. And if this environment is about anything, it's about moving in new directions, it's about using that nexus of four forces of mobile, mobile, cloud, social and big data, using that nexus of forces to create new value. So it's the role above all of business leaders and IT leaders to create a vision to communicate clearly and passionately what that means for our businesses, for our government, for our society. Focus, connect, lead. To take the second word first, an ecosystem is, uh, is a grouping, a loose connection sometimes of different interacting activities and forces. And emotional ecosystem is about how technology makes us feel, how technology helps us to operate. A question that, um, well, I personally enjoy asking IT leaders and business leaders as well is to ask them how many digital anthropologists they have in their company. And they usually give me a rather blank look. And um, my rationale for it is this. An anthropologist is somebody who understands how groups of human beings work together to make things happen. Now, we mostly hear about anthropologists when you're dealing with a remote tribe in South Asia or South America. But uh, anthropologists perfectly well understand how Prague works or how your company works. And so an anthropologist has a lot to say about how your company works and changes. And now, so what's the relevance of a digital anthropologist? Well, tell me this. What else is your IT system for? if it is not, to help people work together to get things done. So a digital anthropologist, somebody who understands how human beings connect, how they feel, how their emotions are affected by the way they use systems, how our customers are affected, how they feel about us. Do they enjoy using our IT systems? I made a joke this morning that even perhaps the tax administration could make their tax online so much fun that people would want to go back and do it again and pay their tax a second time. I don't think that's very likely. You're not even looking as if you would want to, to do that. But you see my point. How IT systems make people feel is a significant part of what we have to deal with. It's a very interesting uh, aspect of something else I mentioned um, in the presentation. We're in the second half of the information age, for sure. Um, the information age is one of these great eras, great epochs of technology, like the age of electricity, the age of the steam engine and steam trains and so on. And uh, they last for 100, 140 years. We're in the second half of the information technology era. The first half began in the 1950s, really. And the first half of any of these great epochs is characterized by what the technology does and how it develops. The second half is by how you use it and what you use it for. And that uh, approach to the way that people use technology, the way that we engage with it, that's really what's driving the nature of so much of the development of technology for the future. That's why I think it's so very important actually that we see the CIO's role as a much broader thing than we have 
and the IT leaders and the IT professionals role is a much broader thing than we have in the past. I think it's one of the most exciting, most energizing changes that I have seen in my 35 year professional career in technology. The concept of bring your own application is very much an extension of the idea of bringing a physical or something or other to, to work or to, uh, to some other situation. Because actually what really distinguishes people's use of those devices is the applications they run on them. And the source of applications from the cloud, from things that people themselves can write, those sources are becoming much, much more varied, much, much more powerful. And many new generation, well not now so new generation, people coming into the workplace or coming into middle and senior management positions have grown up in a position where at school and at university they've always used applications that they themselves have written. And it's a very, very powerful, very important thing uh, for many businesses to be able to use that kind of capability. And it does two really big things. It engages people with what they know best because they know how they want their tools to work. And secondly, it begins to address that issue that has been a burden for technology managers and leaders since the beginning of technology on a large scale, which is to say we never have enough people to do all the things we want. So the idea of bring your own device, bring your own application, of course carries with it risks and there are things we need to manage carefully. But in our judgment, it brings far more in the way of opportunities and possibilities than ever it does elsewhere. The idea of shadow IT being a negative thing, we think will die away in the next three or four years. And this whole concept, what Gartner has called everyone's IT, where many people in the business use their own technology, we think that's going to be very powerful. Something even beyond the Internet of Things yeah. is the Internet of Everything. The Internet of Things is about as the name implies, connecting information and processes with physical objects, like the camera in front of me or like the lighting in this building. But beyond that, you have internet of physical locations, geographical sensing, you have of course internet of people. For the future, you may also have internet of automated avatars, things that represent us or represent processes within commercial or government systems. You connect all those things together, you have an extraordinarily powerful set of capabilities, most of which we haven't even begun to think about yet. Um, it also has, of course, enormous implications for the amount of bandwidth that the um, internet backbones have to carry and so on, the number of devices that may be connected to it, the number of simply the addressing range. So across the whole spectrum of things from the very deep fundamental technology to the to the broad aspects of who would regulate such a thing and, and who would own those mechanisms and those markets, all to play for and all enormous possibilities for, for business and technology growth, I think. All of those things are among trends, among technologies that Gartner's tracking in our um, advanced technology, our emerging technology research. And yes, you're right. We Every year we, um, we sieve out of all of the hundreds of technologies we track, we sieve out what we think are going to be the 40 or 50 most important ones. It's a very um, encouraging and I believe very exciting aspect of the technology world that despite the fact we have such mature technology in many aspects, despite the fact we have technology penetrated so very widely throughout the world in fact, I mean one of the statistics I most enjoy is that when you add together the number of PCs, the number of mobile phones and the number of smartphones in existence, the number comes to more than the number of people on the planet. Despite that fact, there are huge numbers of new technologies beginning to emerge. Some of the ones that you just mentioned, um, some of the ones that seem to me to be so advanced they are science fiction, like printing biological entities, being able to print a spare part for a human body. Now that's not going to come anytime soon. But those kinds of technologies, combined with the things that are already very well near maturity, the things that even 15 years ago would have seemed like science fiction, automatic natural language translation in real time, all of those kinds of things continue to drive many, many new capabilities. Uh, and I think as I ended my presentation this morning to say that despite the fact that technology, the technology era is moving into its second half, we don't see any slowing down 
in the pace of new technologies coming into the market and the capabilities that those things can deliver. It is to go back to the very beginning. It is therefore as important as ever for IT leaders and managers to take a grip of all of this and that's why we say it is important to focus on what's most important to connect with these data, connect with all these trains and to, to lead where the organization needs to go.